All right, so today we are going to be using trigonometric identities to do some integration. So let's get right down to it and let's consider this first one. It says show that sine cubed x equals sine x minus cosine squared sine x. Well, hmm. One of the things that I can recognize when I have sine cubed x, that's the same thing as saying sine x times sine squared x. And the reason why I do that is I know this particular identity here. And if I rearrange it, sine squared, I bring that over, is equal. So I can replace sine squared with 1 minus cosine squared x. And so I've introduced the cosine squared, which I was looking for, distributed in sine x minus uh, sine x cos squared x. And so then I have proven it, or shown it rather. And then I have to, hence, I mean using the above scenario, I have to find the integral of sine cubed x dx. Well, I have to use that. So let's make this sine cubed x is sine x minus the cosine squared x sine x dx. And when I see this, I know this one by itself is easy to do. Here I see a chain rule scenario. The, the derivative of cosine is the sine with the negative. So I'm going to rewrite this as two different parts. The sine of x dx, breaking up using the properties of integrals that I can break up these parts because it's just two separate functions subtracted. Or I can think of it as areas subtracted. And so I can just straight away do this. I know that this is going to be cosine x, a negative, because the derivative of negative cosine is positive sine, minus, well, I know this is going to be cosine x cubed to the one third. The derivative of cosine is negative sine, so I have to deal with a negative sine, make that a positive, and so this will make plus c will be my antiderivative or integral. So I use the substitution of the trig identity, break it up into parts, and then move forward. Okay, now looking at this one, sine squared. Oh, it looks like a chain rule. Oh, no chain rule because there's no cosine. But I know I have to, hmm, this one's tricky. I don't have what I need. It looks simple. And so what I can do here is I'm going to go to my identities and pull up this particular identity. And I'm looking at cosine two theta. I have sine squared and sine squared. And if I, make my pen smaller there, if I take that and solve for sine squared, I get cosine 2 theta minus 1 equals negative 2 sine squared. And so then sine squared theta is 1 minus cosine 2 theta over 2. And I can even rewrite that as 1 half minus 1 half cosine 2 theta. Now I have no exponent and I can work with this as a derivative or as an integral now. So I'm going to go from 1 half minus 1 half cosine 2 theta, which is O oh, d theta. Be careful with my x's, my thetas. 1 half theta minus, well, the integral of cosine is sine 2 theta, I have the 1 half still, multiply by the reciprocal, think about your positives and negatives, and ponder that works well, plus c, and so simplifying it, I get 1 half theta minus 1 quarter sine of 2 theta plus c. The key is to use the identity and solve for something without the exponent in there because there's no chain rule kicker to deal with it here. All right, let's try another one now. I have tangent squared 
to theta. Well, the derivative of tangent is secant squared. But the integral of tangent is not that. So if I can go to my formula booklet, I know this is true. And so I can say that this is the same as 1 minus secant squared 2 theta d theta, which I know then I can say is theta minus, well, the integral of secant squared is tangent. I know the derivative of tangent is secant squared. Deal with the 2, which is 1 half plus c. So that's my integral. And so one of the tips I know is when I have a tangent to an exponent, start to think about bringing in secant and working it backwards, because secants change nicely into tangents when we do the integral. So that's a tip for you, tangents into secants. Okay, another one here. Again, I'm going to do tangents into secants. So using that identity I just worked on, we take it from here, and I know that this is the same as saying tangent theta times tangent squared theta d theta, which the tangent squared, I have my tangent times secant squared theta minus 1 d theta. Well, multiplying in the tangent, I get secant squared theta tangent minus tangent theta d theta. And again, what I'll do is I will break up my integral signs. Secant squared theta tan my d theta minus tangent theta d theta. Well, if I think about this scenario, I know that the derivative of tangent is equal to secant squared theta. This is what I'm looking at. This is my scenario. There's the chain rule. And so just by inspection, I can take my theta add 1 to the exponent, divide by the or multiply by the reciprocal, minus. Now doing this one, if you know it from memory, just go ahead and write it down. But if you f don't remember it, I'm going to think about this being the same as sine theta over cosine theta d theta. And so I have half tangent squared theta here minus, well, if I let a u equal to cosine theta, then du will be negative sine theta. The derivative, oh, sorry, positive sine theta, d theta. I always have to think carefully about my negatives and positives. The, oh. Again, I have to take think careful when negative and positive. It's negative. The derivative of cosine is negative sine. And so applying that over here, I know that's going to be plus. And this will end up being ln of cosine theta. As I was saying, ln cosine theta plus c. Now it's possible that this could be secant and that will change that sign to negative um, and it's just done in a different order. But they're identical antiderivatives. Okay, in this example, the one thing I noticed right off the bat is the angles are different. So I want to make them the same angle. The only way I can change angles conveniently is with the double angle theorem. And so if I use the double angle theorem, I can change that top to two 
sine 2 theta, cosine 2 theta. Oh, I'm dealing with x's. Sine 2x, cosine 2x over sine cubed 2x dx. Well, when I look at this, that cancels with that. Make a squared. I'll pull the 2 out altogether, and so it's 2 cosine 2x over sine squared 2x dx. And when I see this, I can see that the I have a classic u substitution here. Here is my u. I'll let u be sine 2x. So du will be cosine 2x dx times the 2 which is half du cos 2x dx, which I can replace here. I'll pull the half outside, so it's 2 times a half. 1 du over u squared. Those cancel. u to the minus 2 du, which is simply add 1 to my exponent the negative. If I remember u is sine 2 of x, so it's equal to minus sine 2x to the minus 1 plus c. Well, to the minus 1 is just simply cosecant 2x plus c. And there's my final derivative. And so using these ideas of all our identities, we can increase our ability to find integrals.